entitle it, plain and simple, Command to the Churches. And as our Lord's command. It wasn't a, a suggestion. It was a command. <laughs> as I used to hear Zig Ziglar say about the commandments, said the Lord didn't must have give us ten suggestions. He gave us ten commandments. <laughs> uh, and he got a pretty good point. Uh, but the Lord did command the church, of the church, certain things. And that's what I want us to look at this evening. Uh, if we will, let's just go ahead and read the scriptures that I've selected uh, to use. Matthew 28, first. Y'all all know these scriptures, but it doesn't hurt to uh, read them again and evaluate them over and over. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore... Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, or the age. Same thing. And then we Luke chapter 24, verse 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, our home. And you're witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And thus they did. And then we come to Acts 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And certainly that when the Lord empowered the church, He gave us enough power in the person of the Holy Spirit and we need to utilize the Spirit more than what we do. But all these texts that I've read, these scriptures this evening, consist of some of the last words that our Lord spoke to the churches. And this command has not changed. Still the command. Uh, when I used to call on churches, uh, pictorial church directors, we'd call on a bunch at a time. I was training a new employee sometimes 25 or 30 churches a, a, a day. But a lot of churches, when you pull up uh, on the parking lot and as you leave, it exit and it says, now you're entering the mission field. <laughs> and that's, you know, uh, realistic because the mission field is throughout the whole earth, isn't it? But the Lord said, go, a little two-letter word, go. To go with the good news, the gospel of our Lord. I was a good friend of mine, pastor friend of mine, Brother David Smith, had just gotten back from uh, Kentucky, and he had it on uh, uh, Facebook a little while ago when I was looking uh, praising that uh, Noah's Ark they built up there, and he talked about what a wonderful teaching tool, and, and said the gospel was was preached through the erection of that, and it's over a hundred million dollars spent. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if it can win lost souls, or if it can help souls turn and look to the Lord, then I'm all for it. But we're to go with the good news. The greatest news that man has ever entertained. But it still today is good news to those people that had never heard it. And I'll use Brother Brian uh, Thompson back here as an illustration. He was fifth with us and Brother and Ricky took time to go and sit down with him and uh, led him to the Lord. And he's uh, really said ever since, Brother Brian. I can see it in the, his life and movements and his the things that he posts on Facebook. 
Um, he had a problem like a lot of people do in our day uh, in the drug world. And uh, right now he's got the power within him being the Lord to uh, withstand the wiles of the devil. But a person that hears the good news, <coughs> excuse me, a person that hadn't received it is still news to them when they do receive it. It's good news, isn't it? And the Lord didn't say come, he said go. And now he said first of all to those sinners, to the sinners worldwide, come unto him. He said come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. But then he says to his church to go ye into all the world. And we're to go in power. And folk, if the Holy Spirit empowers us, there's no match. There's no equal. And I'm a firm believer that the Lord empowered the churches, and uh, that's still true today. Uh, sometimes we uh, grieve the Spirit, don't we? It's, the Lord told us not to in Ephesians 4, verse 30. But if we let the Spirit, He'll empower us to carry out what the Lord has asked us to do. And I believe that the keys to being a <coughs> successful church is giving heed to this command to go. And we go into the nations of the earth by supporting our missionaries. But the Lord told us, first of all, to go to Jerusalem. He meant home, home base. Uh, we made it a pattern years back in supporting missions to give to home missions, churches are being started here. State missions, churches are being established in the state. And then uh, national missions and then worldwide missions. Uh, but we're to begin at, at home. Um, the average person will not come to church, the average church member, on a regular basis. Uh, and the average church member will not go, as our group has labeled it, soul winning. And there's nothing wrong with that label because that's our ultimate goal, isn't it? But actually when we go, we used to have a program we call visitation. We went on a regular basis and basically we went trying to win people to the Lord. And, but we found us spending most of our time chasing inactive church members. <laughs> and sometimes I think would think it was a waste because some of these people you hadn't seen for years, you knock on the door and visit with them and they'd show up Sunday and they, and they wouldn't come back to you visiting them again. <laughs> Y'all excuse me a second. But I believe that the our soul went in our visitation program uh, is a life of the church. Told you all this before, but I, <laughs> some people take the attitude of an old deacon that was in the church. They had a new pastor. The pastor was concerned because of just a handful of typical Baptist church, handful of people showing up. And he kept on looking at it, where's everybody at? And the deacon said, Preacher, don't worry about it. He said, I've opened the church and rang the bell. If they don't want to come, let them go to, <laughs> I mean, some people have that attitude. It's really not, but our hearts ought to burn for eternal souls that's going to live somewhere forever. Amen. And the Lord gave, he put that uh, stewardship into our hands. We're stewards over the world, if you will. I believe that our soul winning 
is more important than Sunday school. Now, I believe in Sunday school is where we teach and people learn the word, but I believe that uh, the heart of the ministry, and I appreciate Brother Enrique, the Lord sending him here, and he picked up on this soul winning deal here a year and a half or so ago. And to me, it, it, it made life exciting. Now, now, the disappointing thing is we haven't seen a lot of people that have been one to the Lord show up. But that's the thing we need to work on. We have no control over that. A lot of times the, the folk that uh, one to the Lord are young men that don't have a ride and their parents are not uh, adjusted to uh, take them to church. But a lot of churches uh, nationwide, I read a while back how many churches are going out of business uh, per week and it was startling to say the least. Uh, But the Lord gave his commission to us, to the churches. And he's going to call us into account. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And I believe that's true with the churches. Uh, we're going to have to answer the Lord as to what kind of stewards we've been over his business. And I can just hear people today say, Lord, I would have gone, but you know that old preacher down there, <laughs> that deacon, Whatever the case is, that they, they did so-and-so. Uh, years ago, they had a, a Nacogdoches where I grew up. They had a church that no longer exists, but it was down on Taylor Avenue Baptist Church. And they got in a hair-pulling contest. <laughs> they got in a fight, and they were dragging each other, sad to say, up and down the aisles of the church by the hair of the head. They was literally uh, got into a physical fight. Uh, and uh, I had a fellow tell me, he said, man, I'm not going to church anywhere after that. But <laughs> you think it, in judgment day that's going to say, well, Lord, I didn't serve you because of so-and-so? It's not going to hold water, is it? Uh, but it's required that a church be found faithful, not big. Shall I say that? It's required of a church that it be found faithful. Amen. And not the size, is it? But the future of the Lord's work lies with us. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be mediocre. If we're going to do something, we need to give it all we got. Especially the Lord's work. And the Lord said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with thy might. Mm -hmm. And that's true of the Lord's work. It deserves the best, doesn't it? He gave us the best. All right. We just need to get back to the basis of going. 